I am glad uh, to have the opportunity today to interview Professor Mariana Castes. She's Associate Professor of Medicine in uh, uh, Harvard Medical School and she also Director of uh, Drug uh, Hypersensitivity and the Synthesization uh, Program in Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. An Iaki position paper has been recently published on allergy with the title Drug Hypersensitivity in Clonal Mast Cell Disorders by Patricia Bonadonna and colleagues. And I'm glad today to discuss the topic of the paper with Mariana Castles. So, M Professor Castle, looking uh, the review by Bonadonna and colleagues, it appears that the evidence of an association between drug hypersensitivity and clonal mast cell disorders is limited. Do you think that there is no association or that we are missing the right studies? And if this is the case, which kind of studies or study parameters would be required? Thank you. This is a very, this is a very important question. Um, patients who have mast cell disorders, and in particular mastocytosis, have uh, indeed, in a great proportion, a mutation of KIT. KIT is a surface membrane that makes mast cells more leaky. Because KIT is phosphorylated at all times, the mast cells release more uh, frequently and uh, more um, uh, with great uh, avidity some um, mediators, including tryptase. Um, it is our thought from all the centers who do mastocytosis that the mast cells of patients with a kid mutation might be more prone to release mediators uh, when subjected to either antibiotics or local or systemic uh, anesthesia or radiocontrast media or uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication. So the importance of the study is that by looking at the different centers uh, in different European countries, they did not find that there was an increased relationship between drug allergy and patients with mastocytosis. They found the right amount. Now, having said that, at least one third of patients with mastocytosis have some intolerance to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication, and that is very important to know that. The second important thing is that some patients with mastocytosis are diagnosed at the time of their adverse reaction to the medication. So we uh, published a, a paper in 2012 in which a marathon runner uh, ends up the Boston Marathon, takes two Advils, and has a cardiovascular collapse with elevated tryptase of 2000. Uh, nobody had actually made the diagnosis, but this guy, in fact, had mastocytosis. So his first event for the diagnosis of mastocytosis was a drug adverse reaction. So I do think that we have to continue to study the potential association with the right type of uh, studies, the right type of um, mediators, and the right type of challenges for those patients. But in principle, Every patient who has mastocytosis can go and have surgery, can have radiocontrast media, can be given an antibiotic. And the most important thing would be to look at the history, do a good physical exam, and in the patients with high suspicion, do a tryptase level. Thank you, Professor Castas. Which do you consider the most uh, important recommendations for clinicians in this context? For instance, which precautions should be taken in with regards to anesthesia of mastocytosis patients? Yeah, this is another very, very important and at times controversial question. Uh, in fact, all the patients, again, with mastocytosis can be subjected to surgery. Uh, we have recommendations that those patients um, who go to surgery or have radiocontrast media or are undergoing um, any type of procedure be premedicated with patients with already a good diagnosis of mastocytosis, antihistamine H1, H2, and in selected patients, uh, Montelukast, and in some patients who have reacted in the past, possibly some steroids, uh, 0.5 milligrams to 1 milligram per kilogram before uh, the procedure. In addition to that, uh, I have to say that every patient who has an adverse drug reaction with elevated tryptase at the time of the reaction needs to be evaluated later on to see if that tryptase goes down. If it goes down, then the patient is not considered to be at risk for mastocytosis, but if that tryptase remains elevated above normal range, that patient should be considered for a diagnosis of a mast cell disorder. So for clinician and in practical terms, 
do tryptases every time there is a drug hypersensitivity and follow that tryptase four to six weeks later. For patients who have already mastocytosis, please protect them for surgery, for radiocontrast media, by listening to their history and by using antihistamines, Montelukast, and at times some steroids. Thank you for answering us uh, to our questions. Thank you so much, and uh, congratulations for the paper. I think it is a landmark paper that all clinicians should read that will tremendously help patients with mastocytosis disprove that they are not good candidates for surgery, but also help in the management of their reactions. <laughs>